Wendy's Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger is back. A flavor spectacle of pretzel proportion. Featuring Applewood smoked bacon and hot and juicy beef. It puts beer cheese on top of monster cheese and a pretzel bun on top of all that. Simply put, Wendy's Pretzel Pub puts the E-A-T in greatness. Try one today and see for yourself. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger. For a limited time, only at participating Wendy's. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. This is the Mighty Rock, starring BJ and Migs. Mornings. Because, hey, at least once a day, you should experience a BJ. You know, I'm ready for my BJ. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. All right, Wordalarians, here's the deal. We got a T-shirt for you because, look, if you're listening to this show, well, you have class. And if you play Wordle, well, then you got a couple of more brains than I do because I can't do well at Wordle. Yeah, Which class is minus the CL. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. I'm well, uh, so we got everybody then. We got the class, we got the ass, and we've got the BJ and Miggs Wordle shirt. Let's go. How about that? It's Steve's favorite color, black, and of course, it's got that awesome Wordle design that you know, along with your favorite radio show. Uh, and if it's not your favorite radio show, then you should buy it and torture yourself. Uh, this T-shirt's available right now at the Rock Shop, and you can get it at KISW.com. Let's play Beat Mix. It's time to play the game. Yeah. You turn down for Julio Gulia! Turn down for what? what? Home run! Julio yeah, Rodriguez. baby! Yes. Yeah! Home run! Huh. He was part of that big comeback last night. What a dinger. Yeah, <laughs> <Hey>. and <he's>, uh, <laughs> what a dinger! Yeah, and for you folks that don't know baseball terms, that's a that's a nice thing to say about the home run itself. Yeah, what a great yeah. shirt that would be. It just says what a dinger. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like this idea. Oh, uh, man. Well, we should give Rick Riz for a shot, you know, to be able to make that his catchphrase. And then we can, you know, then we can, you know, have what a dinger out there. There you go. Julio Rodriguez. What a dinger. I like it. Me too. <laughs> you go. know, next time we talk to Hyphen, Ryan Roland Smith, because he wouldn't take our Julio Gulio. Maybe he'll take your what a dinger <laughs> idea. Yeah. I keep texting him and he keeps uh, ignoring <laughs> Oh. Yeah. We got to, you know, make a note somewhere. We have to put that down because we annoy the hell out of Ryan whenever we go, hey, Ryan, here's an idea we know you got to use on Root Sports. We've got great ideas. Yep. Yeah, he's like, what are you trying to get me thrown off, mate? No, I'm not, I'm not doing it. Here's a new catchphrase. You just got to start sliding it in there. Eventually, he'll catch on. Yeah, he's, he doesn't like our ideas, man. Let's get to our contestant today. We got Chris in McKenna. Chris, are you there? Yes, sir. Excellent. All right, Steve, get out of here. Goodbye. For those playing at home, Chris will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Chris, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Yeah. This is be my, uh, I think it's my fifth time. So I'm wow, hey. to the thing. Oh, geez. Okay. Well, hopefully we'll get you a dinger here. <laughs> Which Batman villain bases all of his decisions on the flip of a special coin? Dun, 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 dun. Two-Face. Yes. Which California beach is trademarked Surf City, USA? Surf City. Uh, 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 Ventura Beach? No. Uh, pass. Paula Abdul was a cheerleader for what NBA team? Uh, Lakers? Yes. Which weather device measures atmospheric pressure? Barometer? Yes. yes. Who is the star of the Taken film franchise? 
Liam Neeson. Yes. Who was Homer's best friend on The Simpsons? Uh, 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 Flanders. No. <laughs> uh, <pass. laughs> Alan Iverson was a well-known professional at what sport? Basketball. Yes. Which 1979 Vietnam movie was directed by Francis Ford Coppola? Apocalypse Now. Yes. What does the S stand for in the agency NASA? Space. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Correct. Oh man, I, 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 uh, Chris, we could have had this man. Oh, you don't think this, you, yeah. you don't think he's going to get it? I mean, there's one that I don't think Steve will get. He might get lucky, mm. but, but I think he will get the rest. It. It'll be a very close game. I feel. Yeah. Oh, I think Steve's going to get nine right. Oh, oh nine. Wow. He's giving you a called shot right here. Yeah, Love and, the and and a possibility of getting ten right. If he gets, I just feel like that one question, uh, he may get lucky because. Well, I'm with you on why. that one. I think I know we're on the same one where I don't think he's going to get it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Danny knows what I'm talking we'll about. We'll have to yeah. see what happens. Yeah. What a dinger. <laughs> what a dinger. Are you ready? Home run, Julio <laughs> What a dinger. See, look at that. <laughs> Close perfectly. Someone even texted saying, hey, uh, girlfriend, she can make shirts. I'm totally using that idea. What a, th- a dinger. Nice. <laughs> right? I like it. That's fantastic. We might have to make a baseball shirt before that guy beats us to us. <laughs> yes. We might have to do this. Come on now. Which Batman villain bases all of his decisions on the flip of a special coin? Oh, Two-Face. Yes. Which California beach is trademarked Surf City, USA? Surf City. Uh, Venice Beach? No. That's all I could think of. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Orange County Beach. No. <laughs> Surfing Beach. Oh. No. Paula Abdul was a cheerleader uh, for what NBA team? Uh, she was a Laker girl. Lakers. Yes. What weather device measures atmospheric pressure? Barometer. Yes. Who is the star of the Taken film franchise? Oh, my man. <laughs> Liam Neeson. <laughs> yes. Who was Homer's best friend on The Simpsons? Bart Simpson. No. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> crap. Uh, Flanders? No. Mo? No. Alan Iverson Ned? was... Uh, no. Oh. Ned is Flanders. Alan Iverson was a well-known professional at what sport? Oh, practice. Uh, basketball. <laughs> yes. Which 1979 Vietnam movie was directed by Francis Ford Coppola? Acropolis Now. No. <laughs> Apocalypse Now. Yes. What does the S stand for in the agency NASA? Space. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a tie. Oh, wow. I'll take it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, I'm very down. happy I underestimated Steve or overestimated Steve. I'm very, mm-hmm. very happy. Mm-hmm. Good job, Chris. Thank you. There you there go. We... No song for you. Oh, oh. oh. bye, Chris. Oh. No Do song for you. Sorry, buddy. If you wanted something like a shout out, get back to us, Chris. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you both based, yeah, you both missed the same ones. Uh, the California Beach that's trademarked Surf City USA. Sounds but, like Danny and BJ both know yeah, this one. Yeah, that's the one. I forgot about the Simpsons question, which I should have known he'll never get. But Danny and I both are on the same page that he would maybe, he probably wouldn't know this. Yeah. Hunt- Huntington Beach. Yes. Yep. That Huntington was the one Beach. I was trying to think of. Yeah. I've been there. <laughs> I couldn't think of the name, though. Oh, you've you been there? Or- yeah. When you, when you said Orange County Beach, that's why I, I, I thought he might get it, Danny. Is same, you know, he's, same. Yeah, but I thought he would forget. And that's a lot it. of people yeah. say... My wife and I went there and we loved it. A lot of people say Huntington Beach, but it's Huntington, which yes. I don't know if that matters, but... Semantics. It would. It would if we were playing, uh, you know, Wheel of Fortune because you'd leave out that well, team. I, I slur my words. You yeah, fair enough. Slack. Yeah, right. So right. Buddy. Yeah, I cut them slack all the time with those. Yeah. Sorry, oh. HLS. <laughs> Sorry, HLS. You don't get it. <laughs> uh, does anybody happen to know Homer's best friend on The Simpsons? Is it Barney? Yeah. Oh, yep, yeah. yep. Oh. Barney, the drunk, the burps yeah. all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, kind of like that. Yeah, thanks, buddy. <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> uh, congratulations. Well, on your tie. Thanks. Yeah. 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 Good job, Steve. Oh, man. <laughs> I put too much pressure on myself when you said I was going to get nine. As soon as I got two wrong, I was like, I failed. <laughs> yeah, I did too. I yeah. felt like, oh, I forgot the Simpsons question. He's Dang done. It. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's okay. I set you up for failure. There's always another day. Yeah, James Bond. <laughs> Unless I get hit by a bus today. Wow. And then, then it's just a bummer. No, not if you're James Bond. You can get hit by a bus and you'll live another day. All right, fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'll die another day. You'll live another day. The, uh, hey, we got, you know what, our buddies at Loudwire.com, your buddy uh, La- Loudwire, Larry Wire there, uh, he's giving us a lot of good info today. What happened again? Yeah, we got something from Loudwire.com. And uh, they were at this year's Welcome to Rockville Festival in Daytona. Oh. And uh, that's the show where several acts were unable to perform due to severe weather. And the Foo Fighters had to cancel yeah. because of the Taylor Hawkins. Uh, Big Muse filled in for the Foo Fighters, if I remember correctly. 
Yeah. So she was like, uh, you know what? Uh, this contributor said we need to. I, I need to really give people tips for surviving a music festival, especially if it can go wrong like that did. Um, so she's got the top ten ways you can survive a music festival. Like <laughs> these are things you need to bring with you, need to be ready for well, in know, order to survive an entire festival. Because a festival goes over like you know multiple days. Oh, yeah, because I'm thinking, like, Pain in the Grass is kind of like a music festival, but you're not camping there. Sure. Yes. So, I mean, I, 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 what is the true definition of a festival? Is it, I mean... They're so loose these yeah. days. That it's it's, like, I would actually consider Pain in the Grass a festival. Uh, yeah. Because there's a lot of bands that play over multiple days, regardless if you stay there or not. Because you're going all day long. You get there at, like, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. But, like, you stay till 9. OzFest was called OzFest, and Fest is short for festival, and it was just a one-day thing. True. Oh, we do a MIGS Fest in July. I mean, you can camp out at the show box, but I don't think they really want <laughs> you, you to. Think, yeah, the- <laughs> Normally, <laughs> I'm the person that has these kinds of questions, but I'm very surprised that I've rubbed off on you folks. Excuse well, me. yeah, you have, unfortunately. Yeah, sorry, man. Uh, <laughs> I think it's probably a music show where you do a lot of walking around, and maybe it's more than one day. According to the dictionary, it's an organized event typically lasting several days featuring performances by various musicians, singers, and groups. Yeah, yeah. so Danny's right. We've, well, we've gotten real loose with the term yeah. festival. Festival. Yeah. And by the way, thank you, Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the dictionary. <laughs> oh, but you're Wikipedia. So okay, really, there you go. Yeah, we're going to just call it Wikipedia every time. When you say it's the dictionary, I'm picturing you with a giant book and you're paging through it. <laughs> well, actually. I actually feel like that would be a good look if we could just pop that on a screen for everybody. Here's Vicky with the real info. We should just give her a dictionary. She can never use Wikipedia anymore. There you go. Oh, dude. Wait, yeah, uh, what year? Dictionary. Yeah. Whatever year they made one. I don't yeah. care. 1984. <laughs> I think the only yeah. thing I'd use it for is a booster seat. Yeah. All right, we'll get the one from your car. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a phone we'll g- <laughs> Vicky, we'll give you some Stranger Things nostalgia, and you can have a Britannica, because okay. that's what that's what Joyce is selling this season. <laughs> she's, a, she's a Britannica salesperson. Yeah, dude, that's a multiple book thing. The encyclopedia. I know. Britannica. That's what mm-hmm. Vicky's, you know, she's, she's, she's hardcore, man. She's not just dictionary girl. All right? She's, she knows everything. Dictionary girl. Um, so uh, I'm going to ask you, uh, ask you folks, you know, who have been to festivals. You guys are super festival goers, of course. What do you think is okay, the must-have? Like, you, you, if you would give anybody a tip, you'd say, look, mm. if you're going to a multi-day music festival, here's what you should bring, have, be prepared for. for bring, me- bring your Crocs. No. Yes. No. That's, no, but, no. no. That's a terrible idea. Yeah, a I hate to idea. say this, but a lot, the reason people love Crocs, one of the big reasons is because they're comfortable. I and that's know. like number one on our list. It's yeah, fun it's to poop comfortable the shoes. <laughs> they're, they're, they're easy to wash off as well. And, you know, you usually get some gross stuff all over those at the festivals. So it's easy to do, man. And you're airing out your feet, which isn't horrible, you know, because I, I know when I take my, 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 usually I wear some sort of walking shoe, sneaker, whatever. I mean, you take after a long day of festival and you take those off, man, and you know you're killing everybody. The worst for so me. So the Crocs are aerated at least. It's like when girls want to go to festivals or concerts in super high heels, EI, like my, oh, my best friends. That's nuts. And so I'm always in flats. Everyone's making fun of me. Like, why aren't you wearing high heels? By the end of the night, I'm wearing their heels for a couple hours so they can wear my <laughs> shoes. Yeah, so, I was going to say bring more underwear than days of the of the festival. That's a good call. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Yeah. Like, I'd say for every day, at least two pairs. Yeah. And I'm an ex-officio Whoa. underwear guy for anything like that because yeah. it's the quick dry, wicking, and all that good stuff. Just because oh. at the end of the night, like, you know, all day you're walking around, you get all sweaty-assed, and then, like, later on, <laughs> you're not going to want to keep wearing that same underwear. Yeah. No. Not at all. I would say number one for me has to be stay hydrated. Yeah. Oh, oh that is also good, yeah. that's actually number six for her, but on the list. Danny. I want to care about the well being of our concert goers. Sure, man. <laughs> we used to go to Warp Tour all day in in Las Cruces, New Mexico, and it's like right there on the border of like Mexico and New Mexico, and it was you know 109 degrees out there, and yep. people would just pass out like crazy. So it's like just drink water as much as you possibly can. Then to piggyback that. Bring sunscreen. Yes. yes. Number doing seven lull. on the list. Look at you two. Yeah. It's like you guys go to shows and stuff. Even if it's super cloudy. I know. Like, I think at this point now everyone realizes that it doesn't matter if it's cloudy or just the sun is just beating on you. You're still going to get hit with those rays. But when oh, I was yeah. younger, I remember going to Lollapalooza when the Beastie Boys played in Cypress Hill. And it was cloudy as all hell. And I was like, I'm fine. Don't need any sunscreen. <laughs> oh, that was, mm. that was, it was so bad. Like, you were my, a lobster? Oh, dude, it was so, I mean, I don't even want to get how, like, disgusting it was. But, like, it was, like, one of those yeah. kind of sunbirds where, like, it would ruin someone's breakfast if I described oh. it. Yeah. I it had was the, terrible. I had the same thing at an oh. end fest one year. It oh, was, like, yeah. the, but the sun was out. I was just an idiot. And it was just, like, my whole forehead was just, it was, yeah, yeah it was bad. 
And on the flip side, bring that's on clue. Bring an umbrella. Clue. Uh, close. You are sunglasses. closer. Uh, okay, no, no, Steve. That's not the opposite of sunglasses. Is part of the sunscreen, sunshine. Good point. Oh. Okay. Moonscreen. A jacket. Uh, Moonscreen. Uh, all right, you and Rev are very close. <laughs> A if poncho. You there we go. There you go. Oh, One yeah. twin powers combined. Yeah, she says you got to be prepared for rain, man. Uh, which does lead into also, she says, take potential weather advisories and evacuations seriously. Oh, I can see why people, would, especially like in the past couple of years, where they do the loud announcements and people just stay in their seats. It's like, what are you doing? Get, <laughs> right, go right. To get to get to shelter. But I don't I want to lose my spot, man. <laughs> yeah. Incubus is about to play. <laughs> I like this one. Uh, pack bandages for your feet in case of blisters. I never think of stuff oh, like that. Dude, and then yeah. I'm like, oh, why don't I keep them in my pocket? Especially if you decided to buy a new set of like sneakers you got for the oh, show. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you realize they haven't been broken in. And then you're, the back of your, like that like right by the Achilles, yep. that's the worst. And that's why oh, you come to yeah. Vicky because you know she has them. We yeah, that's true. Like, we were lucky, like we were at like a, I think it was a Puyallup Fair, and my wife, she was getting the blisters, and I was like, thankfully, they, they, there was a little stand that had Band-Aids, and I was like, this is the greatest thing. Like, you could triple That's charge That's excellent. It. What, if, well, yeah, what a smart idea. I would have triple charged if I was them. They didn't, but I would have, like, because I'm going to pay it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, but I love that the fair knows that. Like, they just know that's a thing. See, this is why fanny packs are clutch. Right. You just put all that stuff in the fanny pack. Oh, oh I'm very excited to rock fanny pack. I might actually bring a fanny pack with me to uh, Painting the Grass this year. I, I feel comfortable enough to bring it since we had our own that we made, so I'm going to do that. I rock my BJ Makes one all the time when I, at my wrestling shows because sometimes I, I, I believe do. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm on board. It's a cool-looking fanny pack. Man. It is actually really cool. Very 80s. It's super 80s. <laughs> Turquoise and pink. And, yeah, and palm tree, I think it has yeah. on it. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so stupid. It's I love stupid it. awesome. Yeah. All right, it is time for Listeners on the Loose. This is where you pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. We got your calls. We got your texts at 917. And we got these guys at Pain in the Grass. Get tickets at KISW.com. It's Bush on the Rock. Wendy's Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger is back. A flavor spectacle of pretzel proportion. Featuring applewood smoked bacon and hot and juicy beef. It puts beer cheese on top of monster cheese and a pretzel bun on top of all that. Simply put, Wendy's Pretzel Pub puts the E-A-T in greatness. Try one today and see for yourself. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger. For a limited time, only at participating Wendy's. Hey, you got something to say? I got something to say. Point nine KISW, the Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. 206 421 Rock. You can also text us at 77999. And uh, it is a simple thing for listeners on the loose, which, uh, by the way, is, uh, oh, don't actually know who it's brought to you by, but probably some really good people, which we'll find out soon enough. But remember this when you call in, you got to actually follow C's rule. If you don't, well, hey, man, you you know, I'm gonna, come on. That's a simple rule, BJ. That's to show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, we're going to have to gong you and then say goodbye to you. Goodbye, old friend. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. It's Listeners on the Loose. Brought to you by Puget Law Group. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Shockingly, we have a text about food, I guys. I don't know if we yeah. should answer it. but We you don't know. really talk about that much. I know. Okay. It's been an ongoing theme today for some reason. People yeah. want to talk about food. Yeah, it's so bizarre. Food. So I said, uh, you're ordering breakfast at a restaurant, and the waiter asks you, what kind, of bre- what kind of bread do you want? What is your go-to? Is it white, wheat, sourdough, English muffins, side question, jam, jelly, or just butter? P.S. Okay. What a dinger. It's better than less ride, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. That's true. <laughs> we come up with much better catchphrases than a certain number three. Yeah, let's fly. Let's fly. Yeah. I know that was, did you see that yesterday? I did. The Seahawks? <laughs> yeah. I like Let's Fly, which, uh, of course, that's also from, uh, it's a catchphrase from one of my Star Trek shows. So I'm like, I'm all in. I'm all in for this. Do you think they did it because it was a catchphrase in the Star Trek or are they just doing a Seahawks bird fly thing? Well, that's a good question. You know, I, I, I would like to know if that Seahawks, whoever came up with that, if they are a Trek fan, because it is, uh, it, that was, it was a controversial catchphrase for this star, Starship captain. People went on Facebook going, it's a stupid thing I ever heard of. Let's fly. 
Because everybody on Star Trek has their own little catchphrase when Captain, when they want the ship to go, okay, let's go, and the ship goes to warp. Warp and, speed. Yeah, and so everybody has their own little catchphrase, and so Let's Fly was uh, Michael Burnham's, and people were like, Ugh. but now, you know what, for Seahawk fans, we're embracing it. To less fly versus I less ride. I hope we're doing it just to troll the. Tr- I yes. Russell. Yeah. If that's why we're doing it. I'm in for it. If we're trying to come up with like a new thing, shut it down. <laughs> oh, it's got to be totally troll. The timing is totally troll for me. Right. They yeah. should just do that. They, that should be Drew Locke's job. He should just be Bizarro Russell Wilson, yeah. even if he doesn't get the starting gig. Like that should just be. Look, we're going to pay you good money. Your social media is whatever Russell Wilson puts out there. Do the exact opposite. Well, since you brought up Bizarro and he's, you know, a, a backwards Superman, they should let him wear the number three, but have it backwards. So it looks like an E, E, you know, and yeah, because then he was number three. So let him make the, you know, put the three on backwards on his uniform because he's Bizarro Russell Wilson. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's just have him wear the number E. Or he'll, look, he'll look like that, but it's it's three backwards. Oh, man, if he would have wore number three, I think I, I, I want to. I really want him. To I know right he's now. not gonna. I want him to. I know it would be it'd be a fun thing to be like, oh, screw you, Ross. You're not. We're not even gonna. A, we're not retiring your number, and we're not even gonna like give it a a, a year break. <laughs> Next guy up, number three. Well, you know, Drew whenever Locke. we get whenever we get an update, <laughs> Drew always, Wilson. Let's change his last name too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. That way, people well, who bought Russell Wilson jerseys, they don't have to exchange them. Change his first rash. name too. Make it Russell Wilson. Russell. Oh my God. I like that. <laughs> Rodney Wilson. Yeah. Uh, 3.1. We'll let him wear 3.1 because oh, he's the better version. That's what they do. Just put yeah. decimal points on yeah. numbers. Let's say we do that. All right. So uh, is, to go back to the breakfast question, though, yes. uh, I will completely answer this because it is one of my favorite things. Uh, English muffin with butter and grape jelly. You know, I always forget about the English muffin. Every mm-hmm. time I go Same. out, I always, and I always, like, say wheat bread, because I'm like, oh, I'll just oh, have that. Wheat? Yeah. Are you a terrorist? It's yeah, healthier, I am. It right? is healthier, but then it's, like, one of those okay. things I forget so, like, about. The, the giant mound of hash browns and the six eggs that you're eating, but yeah, let's have it wheat bread to make it healthy. The, the wheat bread yeah, takes exactly. it all Balances away. out, man. Fair. Not in the Diet Coke. It makes everything go away. 100%. But then somebody else gets the English muffin, I'm like, damn it, why didn't I remember that? Dude, that's happened recently. Like, cause I go with my go-to sourdough. Okay. Sourdough is amazing. Same. And then I'll do like grape jelly and butter as well, BJ. But when I realized the thirteen coins, actually, I remember I was, I was there Ooh. one time. I was at, with the wrestler Dan Housen. It was a fun moment because we were sitting there and I ordered the English muffins, and he just turned and looked up. He's like, "I haven't thought about English muffins in the longest time." And <laughs> you could tell he was so jealous that I got English muffins because yep. they were amazing. You never think of them like Danny said. You just I don't. don't you know, when they go, "What bread would you like?" You, you don't think of English muffins as bread. But I don't want to put any jelly on my English muffin. That, that's for some reason. I just want to put an unhealthy amount of butter <laughs> so that with each bite, it's oh, just like yeah, just <laughs> dripping butter. Oh yeah. wow. wow, that's where the Thomas's nooks and crannies, man. They are absolutely right. Because it just fills like these little pools of gold. Mm-hmm. And it's got to be toasted just right, too. You can't have it. Un- if it's under toasted, it's it's just. Oh, yeah. There needs to be a crunch. Yes. Yep. Yes. I actually, I usually order white toast when I go and get breakfast. I know it's not the healthy toast, but it's delicious. It's not wheat like Danny. Yeah. <laughs> but I've been I on a why weird. I'm trolling you for that, but <laughs> I am. Yeah, right? Uh, I feel like that's the sad adult in us when we do order anything like wheat. Okay, I'll have the wheat bread. But I've been really into English muffins lately. I bought some at uh, the store the other day. Mm. And I did bring some in last week, and I had to take them home and ate them all. <laughs> but I will probably bring more next time I go to the store when I get our ice cream. Nice. You I had, had one. It was really good. You mm-hmm. had to take them home. <laughs> well, I didn't want to leave them over the weekend and make uh, sure. Like, And plus, we got, like, donuts on Friday. They got overshadowed. Got donuts Dude, on yeah. Friday. We got bagels, bagels on Friday and pastries on Friday. It was insane. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. That's right? an overload. All right. If you had to pick from those three. Since we're talking food and we're stoned, clearly. Yeah. Donuts. See, I was mad that the bagels showed up after the donuts because I already ate the donut. Bagels for sure. Yep. Yeah, bagels what? Wa- are the bagels. Supre- superior to all of those. Yep. I'm with well, you, Danny. Somebody's a little, both of you guys are high, but I mean, I like a good bagel, but I, I'm never going to turn down a donut. Yeah, I will oh. pound donuts, man. Will you? Uh, yeah, I will That's have That's why I don't eat my donuts after with the donuts, rest. man. <laughs> <laughs> I, when Rev eats the donuts, I'm like, I'm not eating any now. Cause he don't blame me because he's, yeah, because he, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My favorite is that you guys still fight over the pink donut. We well, had to I mean, fight over it the last I know, time because there was two of them. And you scared Rev to death when you told him about Dude, it. Dude, you were so excited. Favorite. You came into my room and it was like, there's two pink donuts. And I was working and he it screamed. Sc- I screamed so loud. BJ, there was moment. a meeting going on in the little conference right outside of our, our, our studios. And I opened up the door with pure excitement. Like, hey, Rev, there's two pink donuts. We don't have to like hurry to fight over it. 
and he just looks and goes, ah! <laughs> <laughs> like the loudest scream as the doors open. I'm like, wow. Oh man, our coworkers are gonna be like, we should just continue to work from home. It got yeah. weird. Yeah. So they got very weird. They don't even talk anymore. They just <laughs> scream at each other. Oh, well, that's what happens after two years of just being left in the jungle. We got feral. <laughs> right? Usually there's a noise, man. You opened it. I don't know how you did it, Mr. Ninja, but it was quiet and it was just you talking and then suddenly I just screamed. I was like, I'm opening a giant door. I didn't think I, I didn't have to knock. Next time I'm Well, you knock. never know what he's doing in there. Especially well, he didn't have his shoes off. So, I mean, well, I don't even yeah. know. Anymore. Oh, no. I will. Oh, okay. Well, it's listeners all the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. A lot of people are saying peanut butter and bacon on sourdough toast. Not a lot, but a lot of people are saying peanut butter. And then one guy threw in the bacon. I was like, I mean, that sounds great. Peanut but... butter's also like, I have my moments where I want that on my English muffin. Yes. Yeah, it's oh, so good. I don't want peanut butter on my sourdough. I'm down with jelly and butter, but for some reason, peanut butter on sourdough just seems a little too much. Mm. You know, I'm not going right, to argue well, with you on that one. I kind of I understand where you're coming from. I've never had peanut butter for breakfast. Really? Yeah. What? Even just regular peanut butter toast? Oh, every weekend I have it on my waffles. No, I don't think oh, I have. Oh, oh, oh. That's, That's interesting. And a little drizzle of honey? Forget about it. Oh, dude, wow, really? I don't think I've ever done peanut butter on waffles. Well, might I recommend you trying it? That sounds uh, great. And like, chop up some bananas well, and then mm. put a banana on top of each bite. Well, bananas and peanut butter, they go, go, they go well together. And honey. Yeah, but you know what? When I can just get whipped cream and ridiculous amounts of syrup, uh, why <laughs> would I? Cream? Why would I taint my waffle? Yeah. With All right then. I had waffles this weekend. As a matter of fact, that uh, again, shout out to the Redmond Marriott uh, and down in Redmond Town Center. Good Belgian waffles. Good Belgian nice. waffles. Yeah, which led to a very bad doctor report yesterday. So anyway, oh, uh, congratulations! Yeah. Hooray. Yeah, you timed it wrong. You should went to the doctor before you went to the con. Yep. I know you're absolutely right. I mean, she yesterday she just looked at me and like, okay, what what happened to you? <laughs> it's like just, I never saw anybody so disappointed in my life. She's just like, I don't know what to do with you. All right, see if you can lose a pound by the time I see you next time. <laughs> really, she gave me like she gave me a very low threshold. She goes, maybe she goes when I see you next. Do you think you can be a couple pounds lighter? Like, and she she said two pounds lighter, and I thought, wow. I mean, you know, it's like if I couldn't lose two pounds at that point, she's just like, I'm giving up on you. She's just like, whatever, two pounds if you can. Who cares? It's like I've never I was like, wow, she's done with me. It's over. Hey, someone texted in. They need some advice. All right. I'm ready to go. Maybe it's my doctor. How do I deal with an idiot? So over the weekend, my neighbors were having their graduation party. Well, I went out to cut the grass and my wife uh, came home when she saw I was cutting the grass and said that I was being a jerk and being rude for mowing our lawn while they were having their graduation party because it was being loud. And I'm like, what the hell am I supposed to do? And she said, that's kind of mortifying. I can't believe you did that. Am I in the wrong for mowing my lawn while a graduation party was going on? Mm. Mm. It re- I, you know, it really depends. I mean, if you're... if. Yeah, a lawnmower is very, very loud. It is. And any kind of device like that, uh, you know, is very loud. It depends on how close you are to people, but... It must be loud enough for the neighbors to hear it, for the the wife to be kind of, quote-unquote, mortified. Yeah. I'm like, all right, then you mow the lawn yourself when you think the time is right. I'm done trying. Yeah. I think I... I, uh, Then I had the neighbors and my wife mad at me. (laughs) I did something similar the other day. I had, like, my neighbors like to sit outside on their patio and, like, visit. And I was trying to grill some steak, so I had to shop back my Traeger, which just makes the loudest noise. And mm-hmm. you could tell they were super annoyed. They walked inside and <laughs> shut well, the door. Yeah, and I was like, what do you want me to do? It's Sunday yeah. at 4 p.m. How long is it going like, to take you to shop back? It? Like, maybe, maybe five minutes? A minute. yeah. I was going to say, Maybe yeah. a minute. And they, they were so angry. and like, what? Cry me a river. And Buy a house and leave us alone. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that will look. First of all, that's apartment living. They're going to have to deal with that. Yeah. I mean, you can't complain about that. Yeah, buy a house and get out. Ooh, the neighborhood thing is it, it, the the oh, the lawn mowing party thing. I see both sides on this. And it, and usually men are not the social creatures of uh, of a relationship. They just usually aren't. So I can see him not even thinking it's a big deal. And I can see her going, if I have to go talk to, you know, the person over there, they're going to go, what is wrong with you animals? Right. Uh, so I do see both sides of this. What if after you finish, you go, that's what you get for not inviting me to your graduation party? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I totally think that's a good idea. Yeah. If, if, if it's only, if it's a troll mo, yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm all about the troll mo. Yeah. So uh, I said, yeah, I think that's kind of rude. A couple of people are like, very rude. They shouldn't have done that. But I also understand that if you're a busy person like we all are, when will you mow your lawn? 
Like, you know, it's it's sort of like this is his time that he sets out in his own yard, his own time. It's a whole different world. I think if you're having any sort of party at your house that's outdoors and it's on a weekend, all bets are off because people do their lawn work on the weekend a lot. I don't know. You got to get one of those new things I didn't even know existed. Did you see the, 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 autom- the auto mower? It's like a self lawn mower. It's, like a, kind of it's, like a, it's a Roomba. It's for a your lawn. Yes, I mean it's it's like twenty five hundred dollars. That I mean, seems oh. that seems completely safe and won't chop people up for fun. Right? Exactly. Yeah, that's. Uh, I've seen a couple of Love, Death, and Robots episodes that <laughs> that that's where I've that would happen. I've seen Maximum happen. Overdrive. I know yeah. what happens. I always wow. wanted one of those ones from like Honey I Shrunk the Kids, where you could use the remote control lawn mower that he had. Yeah, this one's even remote controlled as well. Oh, is it really? Yes. Oh, nice. See, if it's remote controlled, I'm a little more okay with it. You but can I'm chill on your on your patio. I've also watched my buddy fly his drone straight into a tree. So, man, I'm still right. not trusting drivers yeah. on this one. Yeah, next yeah. thing you know, you run over like the neighborhood kid's foot, and you're like, right? I'm sorry. I feel like though it's got like little sensor things that'll keep it like in like your lawn though. It's kind of cool. I, I thought that I really think though sometimes. I think some people who are in charge of mowing the lawn like to go out there and get some peace and quiet, if you will, even though the lawn mower is loud. But to sort of just, this is my time away from whatever, just in my zone by myself. I can still do that, sit on the, on the porch and just drink a beer and watch it mow it. <laughs> Hadn't thought about that. If, if you're allowed to still go out there and supervise, if you will, sure. And I don't think it uses blades. How does it cut? I think it's like, it's kind of like the wires, you know, how like how like the uh, oh, like, oh, a, like a weed eater or something yeah. like that. You can uh, hurt that somebody with those though. No wait, that's a blade. Oh, that's a blade, all right. Right? Yeah. yeah I that's... guess it's not a fixed heavy blade. It's a pivoting blade. I so, guess wait, so. Wait, it mo- wait. So it. I guess if it hits a foot, it just doesn't really chop it off. Here's wow. hoping. Well, okay. let's get one and test it. Yeah, no, I don't. Pass. I, I will not. Yeah, I won't be the crash test dummy for that one. <laughs> All right, well, $2,500. Uh, you know what? Uh, you guys can purchase it. Let me know what you think. Dude, if I had a big lawn, and that would be fun. <laughs> and and uh, money to waste. See, this is how I waste money. I'd be like, babe, I just bought a, a <laughs> automatic lawnmower. I feel like, though, if you're sitting on the porch, how can you really tell where it's going? I mean, uh, is it, but is, does it also work by itself? Does it do both? It looks like it works by itself, like a Roomba. That's pretty awesome. Right? I think, yeah, let's do it. Let's get, I mean, I, I'm all for that. I'm not a lawn mowing guy. I, I, I hate mowing the lawn. So that's why I got the fake grass. I was it's just amazing. like, I'm tired of it. This thing yeah. is so cute. It's like a little robot. Yeah. Well, Skynet. I know, right? And so somebody who hates, like, robots and thinks they're going to take over, Steve, you seem pretty okay with this. Yeah, it is odd that I'm okay with the one robot that is actually, like, has a sharp weapon attached it's to it. It's the cute <laughs> ones they're going to get in your home, Steve. <laughs> yeah, and the then cute you'll ones. Be dead. Yeah, that's a good point, Rev. Maybe I should be opposed to this. Don't buy it, people. <laughs> you pick the topic. You guide the show. It is listeners on the loose. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. We got your calls. We got your texts at 937 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. We got a text that says, hey, everybody has their favorite crappy movie. That one bad movie that they'll defend till the end of the day. What's yours? Oh. Pretty much every movie that Steve watches. <laughs> Watch it. Because I was about to say Pootie Tang, but then you guys watched it and realized that I am a genius. <laughs> I think, well, was I the only one that watched it or yes. somebody else also watched it? Yeah. I decided to make you everybody. <laughs> okay. <perfect. laughs> well, uh, Grease 2. It's obvious. Grease 2. It's one of the greatest movies ever made. Better than the first. Yeah. That's a good call. <laughs> it's being a bad movie you're defending till the... Till I will forever defend that movie. Yeah. All right. How about you, Danny? You got probably Titanic, right? No, that's an amazing movie. Number one. <laughs> Number two, it's probably, if we're going to go by critics, it's probably American Pie. Because I feel like a lot of people didn't like that movie or just say it's I don't know anyone movie. that didn't like that movie. Oh, see, I mean, I agree. I, mean, I don't hang out with critics, though. But they, right. But I would say that, like, by BJ's terms, it's not a good movie, quote unquote. It's just more of like a cut did, did American Pie not get fresh on Rotten Tomatoes? I'm surprised because I thought it was well received. Oh, well, if it did, then never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, now some of the other American Pie movies, sure. I always thought it was like not v- reviewed well by critics because it's kind of just like a dumb comedy. Sixty-one uh, percent, both user and critics. Yeah, really, the first one. Yeah, 
Yeah. And no wow. one likes no one like the reason that people like it so much is because it's nostalgia. But for the yeah. most part, people are not going to say it's a good movie. Quote unquote. Well, I really thought it was mu- it was better. I thought it was one of the best comedies of its time. I really am surprised it got that low of a rating. Wow. Another one for me I always I love recommending is Waiting. I think that movie's one of the greatest movies ever. It's and, amazing. And it didn't do very well in Rotten Tomatoes, like thirty percent. Wow, that surprises me because I think that's probably a sixty percenter for me. Like it's, it's a at good least sixty percent. Yeah. It's the, Ryan wow. Reynolds' best movie. Okay, that's mm, a little crazy. Yeah, uh, hard to disagree on that one. I mean it's up there. Deadpool totally takes the cake, but waiting is like a top three. <laughs> hot sure. Rod, I feel like, is one of those movies that we all went, Ooh, went to bat for. Hot Rod. I still yeah. do, man. I still do. Yeah, we. you're right. That's a good one. That that one is the one I defend and people think I'm out of my mind. Yeah. I really, to this day, still love that really awful movie, White Chicks. That was a great movie. Everyone would make fun of it, especially <laughs> the, the makeup Brothers. and everything. It was fantastic. And to this day, if it's on, I will sit and watch it. It had Terry the, Crews in it. There was a moment where that I felt like it was on like every every four hours on Comedy Central. <laughs> it, they, they went back and forth between Office Space and White Chicks. Like yeah. they just decided, you know what? Screw programming. We're just going to show these two movies back to back to back to back to back, and then put Reno Nine One One on. Oh, it got fifteen percent on the Tomato Meter though. Yeah, that kind of makes sense on that one. Whoa, fifty-five percent on the audience. Five percent. Fifty-five. Oh, okay. That's a little. It's a, 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 that's a little better. Um... For me, it's it's there's it's it's anything that Wachowskis do because mm-hmm. like Ma- Matrix Matrix Three everybody hates. Oh, actually, the current Matrix, actually the Matrix Four, I love that movie a lot, and that's a movie that people are like, "You're crazy, that was horrible," and I will die on that hill. I thought Matrix Four was great. It wasn't horrible, but it felt like it wasn't necessary. I watched it yeah. once on HBO Max. And I was like, all right, cool. I had never gone back to see it again. It was so unnecessary. I decided to never watch it and pretend just like the other movies that came out before it, that the Matrix ended after Matrix 1. Oh. It was so necessary for me. I watched it four times. Four times? Oh, wow. oh yeah, dude. I was so I And you complain, so I don't have movie. time to watch any of these things. Right. I know. <laughs> right? right? I, well, I, something four times. But if I love something, dude, I will make the time for it. Uh, you know, and that's, I, I, next thing I know, I was very surprised at how much I was loving that movie and made the time to watch it multiple times. And do you like all of the Wachowski stuff, like Jupiter Ascending and the Speed Racer watched, movie? I've got I've never watched Speed Racer because I'm not a Speed Racer fan, so I was never drawn to it. Uh, Jupiter Ascending, I didn't hate it as much as everybody else did. I've got a, I have it recorded though, and I haven't gone back to watch it for a second time. So I don't know if that pretty much says I don't really think much of it. <laughs> uh, but uh, Cloud Atlas, which I want to watch again because it is a mind F and a lot of people just, you know, and of course, Sense8, Vicky, you and I both love that at Netflix series. Uh, so, but I love almost everything that they do more than the average person does. And sometimes the average person is like, I hate mostly everything that they do. Um, somebody said I watched Waiting last month. Does not hold up. You know, I tried watching oh, it, it recently as well, oh. and it wasn't as great as I remember it. But I still oh, love it because it's oh, nostalgia. That's, oh, that saddens me because I, I I would think that it would hold up. It doesn't hold up. Huh? That's funny because right. I just assume maybe it didn't hold up for me because I've seen it so many times. I'm like, I've all right, these jokes are okay. I'm done with these. You know, but I, I still love the movie. Yeah, that's uh wow. One texter said the movie Rad. It's a great 80s movie. Dude, that, Rad is one of the best Was movies. Was that the bicycle one? It's a BMX bike yeah, movie. Yeah, the BMX one. And it has a dance scene in it where they dance with the BMX bikes. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, that makes sense. It's Sounds like a Disney I, uh, movie. It's so yeah, bad, dude. Yeah. Danny, you would love it. Yeah, well, speaking of <laughs> uh, that one, I, it's the same as kind of like thought process as Brink. I know you guys probably have never seen oh, that one. The Disney right. Channel movie is all about roller, oh, the rollerblading, rollerblading one. You told yeah. us about that one. It's amazing. Still haven't seen it. Oh, you need to watch it. <laughs> Disney Plus, man. Hey, yeah, you got Disney um, Plus. I won't be able to fit it in. Sorry. <laughs> what about, uh, was it Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon? Show enough? Oh, oh, yeah. The Shogun of Harlem? Yes. Oh, Dude, yeah. With Bruce Leroy. Yep. That one was good. So I mean, Bruce, good. L- Bruce Leroy, really? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 All right, yeah. then. It's amazing. Who's the master? <laughs> you are. <laughs> Such a good yeah. movie. My, I think my favorite terrible movie, and I won't defend it because I know it's terrible, and I'm okay with that. It's Wild Wild West. Uh, the Will Smith? Oh, Hell yeah, yeah Wild, buddy. Wild West. Dude, it's, it's steampunk, and it ends with a gigantic steampunk tarantula wreaking havoc. Yeah. Yes, oh, come man. on. I no, I'd make fun no. of you, but I remember Burger King had these limited edition glasses you could buy, and I was all for it. Ooh, I yeah. loved that movie as a little kid. Plus, it has Selma Hayek's butt. Yes, it does. 
Uh, well, look, nothing wrong with that. And that's probably the only thing I've ever watched that movie that I really enjoyed. <laughs> and it's like 16% on Rotten Tomatoes. So oh, I'm not going to no, defend really? it. Whoa. Oh, it's yeah. bad. Oh, it's a bad movie. I've gone oh, back and rewatched yeah. it lately, and it's not good. But you And know. I think uh, the, Kenneth Branagh, the actor, was the director of that. And was he in it as well? He was in it. He was the main bad guy. Oh, he didn't direct it, though? I don't know if he directed it he or not. He might have, which is, uh, he's the guy that played one of the uh, Harry Potter dark arts teachers, if you remember. He's the no, one that... no, Barry Sonnenfeld was the uh, director oh, okay. on that. All right, never mind. I got them confused. Man. <laughs> yeah. Then I won't. I won't. I won't be smirched the good name of Kenneth Branagh because if you're just if you're an actor, what are you going to do? You do the best you can. Yeah, exactly. He played. He played the villain who had no legs. Yes. He just oh. rolled around on his and little And the TV show Wild wheelchair. Wild West well, it was really a cool show. I don't for even me, remember that. Yeah, it they was a bridged, really old show. Well, they bridged the gap because uh, sci-fi was starting to become popular on television and westerns were really popular on television. And so they basically made a western sci-fi show. And it was a really cool idea. Uh, Robert Conrad and I, and Ross Martin, maybe. Yeah, uh, good call. Wow. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was. I I remember thinking it was the only show my dad and I agreed upon, huh. and <laughs> because I hated westerns, and he was like, "What is wrong with you? Well, everybody loves westerns." And then I'm like, "Oh, hey, I watch this." And then at first, my dad's like, "Okay, Wild Wild West, this is pretty good." Then when it get into the trippy trippy sci fi stuff, he was like, "I should have known. That's why you liked it. You tricked me. <laughs> Suck me in." Yeah, he did. He always goes, ah, you tricked me to watching your stupid shows. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a good, I really, I really dug it. I thought it was, it was a fun TV show, Wild Wild West. I don't know how many seasons, what, they have three or four? Maybe? Four seasons, yeah. And it looks yeah. like you can at least get season four on Amazon Prime. I'm going to have to check this out. Yeah, I gotta, I want to watch that again. It's because I don't, I don't remember the episode, so that'd be fun, but I have too much to watch, as you know. <laughs> yeah, you need to watch uh, The Matrix 4 four times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, four times. Know. You know what I'm doing. You know, you know how my life is, man. I don't know how I get through it. All right, this text says, how about Cool as Ice? The Vanilla Ice movie. Oh You'll God. drop that zero and get with the hero. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, I won't be defending that one. When a girl has a heart of stone, there's only one way to melt it. Just add ice. Oh, God. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> that was the slogan. Yeah. That's awesome. That's how you melt it? Just add ice? I yes. feel like that doesn't melt anything, ice. Vanilla okay. ice. He's hot. Yeah. He's kind of like the Machine Gun Kelly of that generation now. Uh, now I, look at <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> All right. Got a solid 3% on the tomato meter. Woo! Three? Yes. Yeah, baby. That's so let's be Fantastic Four. It's amazing. 43% yeah. from the audience. There you go. Yeah. That's a decent jump. <laughs> it's a decent jump. I really want more from my movie, Steve, than a decent <laughs> jump from 3%, okay? See, I like back in those days we didn't have this. We didn't have Rotten Tomatoes telling us how to think. We just watched bad movies and made it, made it a judgment call on our own. And I was like, you know what? This cool as ice is good. Because not every movie was being reviewed by Siskel and Ebert. So you didn't know if it got the two thumbs up mm -hmm. or not. No, but it was probably being reviewed by Cheech and Chong. I mean, a lot of you people watching these movies were high. Just like with Rev, I will fight him to the death over Wonder Woman 1984 because I, he has yet to watch that movie sober. I have, and it was awesome. Yeah, it's still a great movie. You have not watched it sober. So what? She lassoes lightning. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, God. Don't you see? Yeah, you, de you defend it to troll me, and Steve <laughs> defends it because he's Steve. What about Stone Cold? The I was Brian about Bosworth to say movie. that. I looked it up. It's got. It's actually no. got a 33% on Rotten Tomatoes. That is 32% wow. higher than I thought it would get. <laughs> Same. Also, you can get that right on YouTube. Even isn't better. That, isn't that amazing? All the other movies that are lower than Stone Cold. You might as well just quit the business if you actually are below the Stone Cold line, as, as far as I'm concerned. Have you seen Stone Cold? I've seen enough of it to say no more. Thank you. That's crazy talk. Because once you watch it, you can't stop. <laughs> His mullet's amazing, and you can get it on 1080p uh, on YouTube. I'm watching it right now. No, don't do that. Don't, don't, <laughs> it looks don't really do good. It. Ryan Bosworth is a blight on the community. Oh, I think we've gotten to the point now where most people are just like, ah, it's still. And now we just look back fondly on him. Well, yeah, I mean, mullet. that's oh God, that that, that's because mullet. we've had some winning years, man. True. <laughs> yeah, I think mullet. the winning years have helped Brian Bosworth. But you're right. But before it was like, what a joke we were for picking that guy. Oh, my gosh. Uh, oh, yeah, I, yeah. Stone okay. Cold's a fantastic film. Uh, fantastic is a word you obviously have not looked up recently in the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a big question that has to be answered right now. What do Ryan Castle and a bank have in common? I'm going to tell you at 950 on The Rock. And now, 
the Ryan Castle question of the day. What do Ryan Castle and a bank have in common? Just like the rest of you, I'll be replaced by a machine. Yes. Or have been. Yeah, when was the last are. time you were in a bank? Yeah. Ooh. I, well, I don't know. Yeah. And also, uh, like a bank, uh, Ryan Castle likes ATMs. Oh, someone said they both like deposits, which is a little less vulgar yeah. there, BJ. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, how about if you're visiting uh, either one of us after midnight, bad decisions are being made? Yeah, that's it. Both have cash covered in cocaine. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't we? We all, though, do. Yeah. Someone said I'd rather hang out with Todd Peach than either. Oh, look at Todd Peach nice. getting the call. Yeah. Nice. Peach Todd's a nice guy. Bank. I like hanging out with Todd, too. He makes yeah. good financial decisions, unlike Ryan and I. Yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> uh, we got a 59-year-old man in Florida. His name is Timothy. And what a great day it was for Timothy last Wednesday as he was released from prison, uh, serving an eight-year sentence for bank robbery. And he got out. Great day for him. And what did he do on Thursday to celebrate? Uh, he no, let me guess. Run. Well, he robbed got, a bank. Yeah, you go. Allegedly. Oh, man. Allegedly. We don't I didn't know. even read the story. Yeah. Yeah. It was alleged, though. Cause, uh, but they allegedly said he walked in, had a gun, got 150 grand, then carjacked a Toyota Camry and fled the area, and they still haven't found him. He looks like a delightful gentleman, by the way. Jeez. Why do they all look like me? He looks just like me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You got your eyes. Oh. Yeah. So what would BJ be doing if this radio thing hadn't worked out for him? Yeah, baby. Where's your Camry? Thanks for prostitutes. It. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks for that. Sorry. Uh, Ryan Castle, uh, he's got a 12-pack. That's next. BJ and Mix play of the day. The ketchup containers, the trick to getting it all out is uh, if it's like a Heinz bottle, it has a number on it, that's where you're supposed to hit it. You kind of karate chop it and just... Well, Don't stick you your knife in there. Chop it and then yeah, I mean, I, yeah. Yes. I'm so thinking it all comes out. I got you. Unfortunately, what your 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 hand movements don't really. They're, Karate they're, chop. Yeah, less chop, just, more yeah, spank. The, the sound, the hand movements. I don't. I mean, if we yeah. put that video out, I think we make a lot of money. Yeah, I think some people get kicked out of restaurants if they try. To <laughs> yeah. <laughs> DJ and Migs mornings on the Rock ninety nine point nine KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's another question from a listener. I'm getting my wages garnished. Can bankruptcy help with that? Absolutely. Uh, One of the big reasons people file bankruptcy is because they have a judgment or a lawsuit against them or their wages are getting garnished uh, and so they can't pay their other regular ongoing bills. People sometimes think that you can't file bankruptcy once they have a judgment against them or once a garnishment has started, and that's not true. Filing bankruptcy will immediately stop any garnishment that you have going, except for child support, uh, and stop your creditors from continuing on with garnishments of your bank account, your wages, um, and in most cases will discharge that liability uh, through the bankruptcy process. And we can file a bankruptcy case uh, for you usually the day you come in. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. Wendy's Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger is back. A flavor spectacle of pretzel proportion featuring applewood smoked bacon and hot and juicy beef. It puts beer cheese on top of monster cheese and a pretzel bun on top of all that. Simply put, Wendy's Pretzel Pub puts the E-A-T in greatness. Try one today and see for yourself. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger. For a limited time, only at participating Wendy's.